Hi, this is Eric with ACRL Tech Connect, and we're going to try something a little different here and do a little video recording on a tech topic. And I thought I would talk a little bit about Chrome extensions. Um, the Chrome extension that I've written is this Wiki, Wiki PDPLA one that I wrote about in a previous post, so I won't go into it too much. But what I will do is step through a brief presentation that I gave on it and talk about Chrome extensions a little bit more broadly. Um, so why would you write a Chrome extension? There are a lot of good reasons that basically have to do with expanding on the capabilities of a typical web app. So you can write an extension that will interact with other applications. Um, one password is a good example of this. So it's a password management plugin that you can put in your browser that goes and then talks to the actual application that keeps track of the passwords. And that's what this little extension is here. When I click on it, it brings up this interface that I can then search for a password in and automatically fill it into a website. Um, you can do pretty advanced things about altering the browser's network layer, so I use HTTPS Everywhere also, and that's one that forces HTTPS connections, which just isn't really something you can do um, in, a, in a web app everywhere. Um, you can add a button to the browser's Chrome that will do something, so like all these extensions basically do that, and anything that you need to work around web limitations, essentially. Um, the specific reason I did WikipDBLA as a project was mixed content policy, and so I'm going to skip some slides related to that. I don't think it's necessarily um, useful for this discussion. Uh, what are the advantages of writing one over a web app? Uh, predictability is really huge, so you can support just modern browsers, essentially, which is really, really nice if you ever had trouble in web development supporting old browsers or just inconsistent ones. Just supporting Chrome or Firefox is just a wonderful experience. Um, you get access to really advanced features, not only like sort of the latest HTML5 JavaScript features because of those browsers, but also some APIs um, built into the extension environment that are really powerful. Um, things are really fast in an add-on because it's not like the user is visiting your site and downloading all your assets and content. They basically do that once. They get a big package of everything, and then they stay with it. Um, obviously, you can push out updates and stuff, so it's not totally true, but I think in general the, the speed is a little bit better than most sites. Um, and then working around limitations, like sometimes you just have to do something in an extension to get it done. Uh, so this is like your most basic Hello World um, Chrome extension, and it's just two files, just a handful of lines in each. So let me talk a little bit about each. The first one is the manifest.json. It's like metadata to go with your uh, extension that you're writing. So you give it a title, obviously, a version, which is important for upgrades. So if you ever publish a, a higher number version, that's how the clients know to pull down new information. Um, manifest version, there used to be an older school, old manifest version that some of the fields were different, and that's the only reason you have to specify that. And then what I'm doing here is I'm using a content script. And so that says any URL that matches this pattern here and I have some wildcards in there. I don't think it's it fully supports regex, regular expressions. It's just some wildcards, um, but I'm targeting WorldCat there. I say, for any, any URL matching that, I want you to load this JavaScript. When do you do it? Do it at the document end when the full DOM is loaded, the whole HTML page. Um, that can be very important for various things. So you have a few options for when it loads, and you don't want to load your script when there's like no HTML on the page yet and you might be like trying to access elements that don't exist and stuff. So that's a little bit of something to consider. Um, and then what is the actual script here? Well, I just wrote out a little um, JavaScript that basically what it does is it takes all of these row elements um, that are on the, the WorldCat page and it iterates over them and sets all of their URLs to be uh, the Rickroll video. So, you know, this is obviously super important library stuff. Um, and let's let's go and like load this up and see how it actually works. So here I have my two files, um, content.js and manifest.json. They're just those two that I showed you on that slide. I'm going to go to my extensions page. If you've never visited this before, it's just chrome colon slash slash extensions. Um, it's not something you need to go to uh, unless you're kind of doing development. 
um, I check this developer mode box and I think that's what gives me some of these buttons here. What we want to do is load unpacked extension. That means basically give, give it a folder and it will load it as if it's an extension. Um, so I'll hit that and now let's see if I can find where I put this. Okay, there it is right there. Very cool. Um, and I do that, it loads up. Um, it'll throw an error if there's something wrong there. So if it, if it can't parse your manifest file, we can see that title and the version right in there. Um, it's also super useful as you're developing. Uh, you can give it a folder and then just continuously reload it. So I can go and edit some changes and then come back and hit this to get my, my new version of my extension. Um, so that's all loaded up. It's enabled. Um, and now if we go to WorldCat, I will search for um, change choice. And I think what will happen if I click on a portrait of the artist as a young man, I will be taken to Rick Astley video, which we are not going to do right now. So obviously, you should go and install this on all the computers at your workplace because it's super useful. Um, yeah, so that's that's a, just a very basic demo. Um, I've linked to some documentation down here. The manifest file is really important and probably the only kind of super unique thing. Um, it has lots of different fields where you specify things. Mostly the important part is you want to start specifying the the kinds of permissions and abilities that you're at that your extension does in the manifest. So that's very very important. Um, you can see here that it's like this one is talking about this is how you would override the, the override the bookmarks UIs. There's the content scripts, which is what I use. So those are ones that you can inject onto pages that match URLs. Um, just lots and lots and lots of permissions here. And then um, here's another long set of different things that you can ask for. So you can ask for access to people's bookmarks, their browsing data, their content settings, cookies, etc. Um, and all of those things they get prompted for, right? So they see that when they load it up, but this is just to demonstrate that there's an awful lot of things that your extension can ask permission for and, and get to. And then I have up here also the content scripts page. All of this is coming just from like the Chrome documentation, um, and it's quite good. And then the, it talks about the different APIs that you can use in terms of a, a content script, and it gives you a little manifest example there. So this is one that loads up different CSS and JavaScript on all Google pages, for instance. Um, so that's that. And there are a few different types of user interface that your extension can have. So you can have a browser action. That's what these buttons are. So my, my one password is one. Um, this is like ad block. This is context. Um, Page actions are a little bit different. So browser actions can happen basically any time, but page actions are a little bit more specific to the actual page you're on. Um, like if I was going to do something that only works on WorldCat, maybe that would make sense to be a, a page action. And uh, HTTPS everywhere, it makes sense to do that. I guess basically like browser action, think of it as something that a person could use at any time, whereas page action only makes sense in the context of a page. Um, context menu is like when you right click, you get these options. So I have one password and TweetDeck installed. So these actually were added by the extension to this. And I can, you know, if I ever want to share, I can just right click and do it. Um, Zotero is another good example of one that adds something to the, the page context menu so that you can save things with Zotero. And you can also specify an options page. Um, these little things that pop down actually are, are HTML pages too. So they're like little, like this is HTML in here that you specify. Um, and then the options page, if I open up context, um, this is like an options.html page that's within the extension itself. You can see and it specifies a whole bunch of things. Um, while talking about options, one of the APIs that you can hook into is um, Chrome Storage Sync. Uh, so I have DPLA up here. This isn't really something that I even talk about. Like this isn't so public facing, but it is actually in Wiki DPLA. Uh, I have an option in there for the number of results you want returned. 
And what it does is it uses this chrome.storage API. So that's not just like vanilla JavaScript, right? That's an API provided to extensions. And it says, go and get this storage um, information, get the, uh, the num results. So it's just a very basic key value data structure. Um, and what I get back from num results is an object that will have object.numResults um, set to whatever whatever I've set it. And I have, um, this is the value getting used. So the, the Chrome storage sync has like basically two halves to the API. It has a get and a set. Um, get, I'm getting what that was. And then I have another script that stores it based on user interactions that happen on the options.html page. So when somebody changes something, I, I run this storage set function um, and essentially just chrome.storage.sync dot um, set is what ends up getting called. So that's another interesting API that's that's nice to hook into and that again syncs like everywhere. So you know somebody installs an app on a on a different version of Chrome on a different computer, um, they're going to get those options synced across them. An interesting thing about extensions that I feel like is worth mentioning. Um, I'm not going to talk about wiki PDPLA, so I'll just kind of switch through that. Um, I do think message passing is important to talk about. So you saw previously that I had my content script, which is running on the page. But you can also have things that run in the background. Um, so for instance, if I did want to interact with my options and stuff, I have to interact with a, a background script. And there is a message passing API. Um, and basically what it looks like is you have your one background script, but you could have multiple people going on different pages, a person opening multiple different URLs to multiple different copies of your content scripts opening up. And so how the messaging works is defined in this message passing API. Um, I use the simple one, which is, is really just quite easy. Um, again, it's an API underneath this big Chrome object that Chrome provides, chrome.runtime.sendMessage. Um, if I can find that in here, let's see. Send message. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is, this is a great example of it, actually. So this is my background script. The WikipDPLA uh, foreground, that content script, scrapes the page and sends information back to this. And there's an event listener, just like a typical event listener, like for clicks and other DOM interactions that you do in JavaScript. There's an event listener function that I've defined here that listens for that message from the content script. And then it executes a function. It goes and looks up some data. And then it sends a message back to the foreground. And that foreground script also, it has something that looks very similar to this passage where it listens for something and when it gets a message, it injects links and content onto the page. So it's, it's really a quite simple API. Um, if you're familiar with JavaScript uh, callback style um, programming, it, it'll be very familiar. Um, again, a lot of these things like basically uh, you have a function and uh, you pass it as a parameter the callback function that's going to get called when it's finished. So you're, you're saying do something and then do this. Uh, is a very common JavaScript programming. And I think that is just about it. Um, I talked a little bit more about how that worked. This was a presentation I gave at Quid for Lib NorCal last year. So these slides like that I was actually flipping through are right here at the fet.net slash w. And then there's some more um, links in there. I think uh, to just end by talking a little bit about what you would use a Chrome extension for, Zotero is a, is a cool ex idea. But if you're just kind of a one-off librarian, um, you're not <laughs> developing a huge piece of sophisticated software like Zotero, what could you use it for? I find myself using Chrome extensions to solve little problems that you just can't with the level of customizability you might be giving in an app. So I've used it to add validation constraints to the software we were using to record reference statistics 
for instance. Um, we, that wasn't possible in the interface, but I can write some JavaScript to do it manually, and then I tell all of our staff to install this extension that enforces that. Um, things like that, you can, you can really have a lot of powerful control over public computers by installing either custom extensions or some of the wonderful ones that exist out there, like uh, HTTPS everywhere to provide greater security. A um, lot of good possibilities there. And I think there's a lot of possibilities with things like open URL and just other ways of kind of aggregating and presenting content to people can be done in interesting ways through extensions, um, which is clearly something that's been worked on a lot, but it's definitely worth playing with. And maybe, you know, you can come up with something that's pretty specific to your institution that'll work well. Um, yeah, and those are, those are some things to do with browser extensions. Hope you enjoy.